it's electronic communications. So this is, for majority of you, I think there should be like general knowledge. But let, let's look at some of the things we need to look at. First thing, social media. So as you know, that's electronic, electronic communication um, through either Facebook or anything where people share pictures and ideas, personal messages and so forth. We've got our vlogging that comes from vlog, which is a video blog. So it's somebody that posts like their ideas and stuff, but using video. Podcasting is the digital recording of music, news and so forth. And streaming is when we are live. So when multimedia file can be viewed without being completely downloaded. So streaming is you can watch something as it happens, but then so it downloads a bit, you can watch it and then it sort of deletes it again. So it doesn't stay on your computer. So it's streaming, it uses um, takes up less storage space than downloading. Okay, electronic communication, there's just things we're going to look at just now. And then these are some netiquette rules. So show people the same respect, do not say things you wouldn't say to them in person. So it's like general good manners on the internet. And that we call netiquette. Okay, so our first one we're looking at is email. So good things about email, you can send it to anybody across the world. It happens very quickly. You can send it to multiple people the same message. Um, just we must still remember netiquette still applies here. And with that it means don't send large emails with large attachments and so forth. Always had, have a, a subject line and so forth. And try not to send spam. We send a lot of marketing information through to people. There's lots of places you can Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Outlook, all of them will do that for you. Then a blog. So a blog is sort of um, in which a website creator posts short informal stories or articles on their website. So it's somebody that they also say it's like a digital diary type of thing where you post what you do when you do things you're interested in on your own blog, as to say, which is basically a website, but where you post those things. So if you use video, as you said, that would be a vlog. And then we're going to have, I think it's down here, yeah, microblog. Microblogs is a blog, but it's just limited characters. So that's like Twitter and so forth, where we send, we can't, so usually limited up to 120, uh, 280 characters. We get our SMSs, which uses the data of your cell phone, or not data, but your um, the cost from your cell phone provider to actually send messages over the network. And then we also get our instant messaging. Example of that is our WhatsApp. So it's the same as SMS, only difference it uses data, it's normally free, except now for the data cost, but otherwise we can send messages to other people. Some nice advantages, disadvantages, main one is it can be a distraction, so nowadays people can get messages while they trying to sleep in a meeting, trying to do something else, so it can be distractions, but you can create groups which makes communications nice. Video casting, so that's normally broadcasting over the internet. So a lot of esport matches, even nowadays when like when the president talks to us about the COVID nineteen um, state of the nation, all of them would be video casting where we can actually on YouTube look and see what's happening. Podcasting is the saving of like audio messages. And then posting it on the internet so that people can download it and listen to a variety of topics. Okay, then. Okay, VoIP. Voice over internet protocol. So first part of this is a protocol. A protocol is a set of rules for communication. So this allows us to communicate over a network. 
and then this is now to send voice over the internet. So it's a set of rules so that we can send voice over the internet. Now, uh, when you explain this, please just refrain from... You must differentiate basically between somebody that's just posting like a song on the internet, because there you're also downloading voice. So this is not that. This is basically talking, so like a telephone call using the internet so and that's all our whatsapp calls zoom we use now um, discord the whatsapp um, video call and and voice call all of them uses and skype and so forth they use this protocol so that we can use our data to send voice conversations over the internet video conferencing is VoIP just bigger so this is what a majority of companies do nowadays when they have big meeting meetings but they can't be in the same location so then they can use video so that you can see each other's faces and then still have a conference and talk to people advantages disadvantages all right so mobile technologies this helps our communication a lot because nowadays with mobile phones we can keep them with us there's another thing called feature phones. Feature phones could send multimedia messages, play music, take photos, all those things. While these features are like smartphone features, they are different in two ways. Feature phones have a very weak processor. And applications had to be designed specifically for each feature phone. And there was no app store. So these feature phones were made just to get a cheap solution to our smartphones but then they could still do a lot of these features but they were specifically made for those phones because they have very weak processors and low quality screens but they did that because they wanted a cheap alternative for a lot of people then our smartphones is our high-end phones we get nowadays you can do a lot of things on them most things that you can do on a computer, maybe just in a smaller manner, but you can play games, you've got messages, you've got internet, sound, vi video cameras, all of you know all of those things. Okay, so we get our mobile browsers. Remember, browser is the software that allows us to connect to the internet. Examples of browsers is Google Chrome, um, on iPhone... It is Safari, yeah, Safari, but there's other ones like Internet Explorer and them as well. So they are all apps on our device that allows us to connect to the internet. So a mobile one is the same app, but it's just made for a mobile device, meaning it's got a bit less features, but it's made for a smaller screen, so that it's easier to work with on our phones and stuff. So you can see there, they talk about mobile phones are smaller, so that they can rotate and all those things. That's all added. So mobile devices. Tablets. We know that's our larger than 7 inches diagonally normally. And we can do a lot of things on it, on our tablets. We get our smartphones, which are normally between 3.5 and 5.5 .5 inches. And then... The next one I want to jump quickly to is our phablets, which is then the in-between one. So it's bigger than a phone, but smaller than a tablet. But it's basically the same thing. So all of them are mobile. They are made for specific purposes. Smartphones are just smaller, so it's easier to travel with. But a tablet is also relatively small, so it's still easy to travel with. But then while you're sitting on an airplane and stuff, you can easily quickly do some things. While a smartphone is small, while you're walking and stuff, you can still do that. Then we've got our wearable technologies as well, which is our smartwatches. I think a lot of us got that nowadays. Our fitness monitors that looks like a watch, but that can keep track of all our steps and calories that we've burned and so forth. And we get like glasses and headsets that can do virtual reality type of applications for us. We get our e-readers, they look like a tablet, but they're mainly made for reading of books. 
um, a smart camera. So that's our digital cameras with lots of new features and a normal GPS device that we normally use in our car to tell us where to go to. Okay, so the use of wireless technologies. So we need access points. So that's a place so that we can connect to the internet. Most of these wireless devices or our um, mobile devices we spoke about, their main features are that we can connect to the internet wherever we go. So we do need access points. Difference in range and bandwidth. Range is how far you can be from the access point. While bandwidth has to do with the speed. And it refers to how much data can be sent through the network. So bandwidth is sort of the amount of data that can be sent over a network within a certain time span. Connection speed is how fast that information can travel. And then blockchain refers to the growing list of records called blocks that are linked using cryptography. Cryptography. Okay, wireless networks does not require cables or wires. We just need to be within a wireless access point range. And then they speak about that. So we've got our GPS we spoke about that we use nowadays. 4G, 5G that's coming out now or that's busy being rolled out in some countries. And we get our Bluetooth that's a very short range. Protocols I spoke about, that's our set of rules that allows for communication. So the ones we're looking at is our POP3, which stands for Post Office Protocol version 3. This is one of the protocols that allows us to retrieve emails. So that's the main thing you must remember. Your POP3 server is to retrieve emails. Our next one, our SMTP, which is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, that's the one for sending emails. IMAP. IMAP allows us to access your emails wherever you are, if you have data or connected to the internet. And our VoIP, as we discussed already, is a protocol that allows communication, like telephone calls, over the internet. Okay, we get some other protocols as well. Other popular protocols are HTTP and HTTPS. Remember, this is, allows us to see websites. And this is the secure version. And FTP allows us to download files very fastly over the internet. And then there's some. Okay, so because of all this communication and stuff we've got on the internet, security is very important. So that starts with your password. So there's a lot of features. Having long passwords, uppercase, lowercase, don't use your same password in different places change your password regularly and so forth and so forth. This is all good manners to have with your password to keep it safe so that people cannot hack into your account easily. Then we've got encryption. What encryption does, it actually scrambles the message so that if somebody intercepts the message, they cannot understand the message. They need to decrypt it first, but that can only be done with certain passwords or stuff so it allows us to keep our messages while it's in transit safe multi-layered verification multi-layer authorization is an authentication method much like a password in which a computer user is granted access only after successful giving two or more post pieces of information so normally that would be so knowledge of something like your ID or your mother's middle name, possession of a verification code. So that sometimes when you, you have to log in with your password, so that's the first part. And then they'll normally send you either a message or an email with another code that you then also have to type in. And when that is also correct, then only it allows you to go in. So it just means you've got more than one manager, it's not just a password. It's a password and a code, or the password and then your fingerprint verification, or whatever, to make sure that you are who you say you are. Okay, and that's the end for our chapter on electronic communications. Thank you very much, everybody.
enjoy see you next time